it is time to have this conversation. And this is a sensitive subject uh, that is not lost on me. It's one of those conversations that everybody probably needs to have, but nobody really wants to have. There's a lot of shame. There's a lot of guilt. Today, we are going to talk about porn. When it comes to porn, I think the first thing I can say is uh, I, I don't know any men that are truly proud of like a porn addiction. And so just off that basis alone, I think it's fair to say that it's not good for you. Unfortunately, it leads a lot of people down very dark roads. This is not a podcast or a subject that I wanna have shame and guilt and pain and all those things around. I wanna give you a different perspective because I think it's important to not only overcome a porn addiction if you have one, to prevent a porn addiction if one is um, coming or um, ultimately, how can I show up and be the best version of myself? Welcome to another episode of the Jimmy Rex Show. This is Real Men, Real Conversations, episode six. And today we are going to talk about porn. Uh, it is time to have this conversation. And this is a sensitive subject uh, that is not lost on me. Uh, it's one of those conversations that everybody probably needs to have, but nobody really wants to have. There's a lot of shame. There's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of secrecy around porn. And uh, I hope that by the end of this conversation today that you will be able to see it um, a little bit from a different light, from a different uh, perspective and vantage point, and that it'll make a difference in your life. Um, and this isn't a religious standpoint. This is one that, uh, well, I was talking to one of my mentors is Erwin McManus. He wrote the book, The Genius of Jesus. He's a pastor out in LA, runs a mosaic church. And I was talking to him one time, we were talking about smoking. And, you know, people say, well, is smoking a sin? And he said, is it possible that not everything is a sin, but maybe it's just bad for you? And, you know, when it comes to porn, I think the first thing I can say is uh, I, I don't know any men that are truly proud of like a porn addiction. And so just off that basis alone, I think it's fair to say that it's not good for you. And um, now I do want to emphasize that this is not a podcast or a subject that I wanna have shame and guilt and pain and all those things around. I wanna give you a different perspective because I think it's important to not only overcome a porn addiction if you have one, to prevent a porn addiction if one is um, coming or, um, ultimately, how can I show up and be the best version of myself? I mean, ultimately, all of these uh, conversations that we're having are to optimize our lives, to be better in every aspect of life. And I think having a porn addiction, there's a couple problems that come with it. Number one is, um, you know, it's a time suck. It just is. It wastes a lot of time, energy, and effort. Uh, another one is a, a lost confidence, especially in the dating world as a husband, as a father. Another one is it is a coping mechanism. We're going to get into that a little bit more, very similar to alcohol that way. And um, if nothing else, it teaches you to objectify women and to look at them as objects more than human beings. And so off those things alone, I think it's important to discuss this topic. Um, now, one of the things that I think is important to start this conversation out with is there's different levels at which people have addictions to pornography. It's a very important part of this. And one of the reasons for that, I think, is because pornography is one of those things that just like drugs, you have to get more of it to get the same kind of hit. And so unfortunately, it leads a lot of people down very dark roads. We've seen, um, you know, uh, Chris Hansen, for example, on To Catch a Predator. This is one of the craziest things. Like half the time he catches one of the predators, they will say, oh, I thought this might be a setup. I knew this was going to be a sting. I thought you might be here. And like, you're sitting there watching it and you're like, well, dumbass, then why did you go try to have sex with this kid? And because it's an addition that they can't, I mean, they can't even help themselves. They know there's a high probability they're going to get caught. Hell, that's part of the high for them is the fact that it's such a taboo thing to do. And so unfortunately with pornography, the more you do it, the more you go down these different roads, the darker and scarier, the type of pornography, the frequency of pornography um, that it ends up being. And so, um, you know, but to know if you have a problem with pornography, I think there's a very, a couple of questions I wrote down here that make it pretty simple. Number one is, do you hide it from your partner, right? If you're in a relationship and you look at pornography, if you're hiding it from your partner, if you do it in secrecy, you have a problem with pornography. It's pretty simple in that case. Um, are you keeping it from, you know, your girlfriend, 
your spouse, your fiance, whoever it might be. That's the first thing that I would say. The second thing is, is when you do it, do you feel bad about it? Do you feel shame around doing it? Um, I always say that shame festers in the dark. And so one of the problems with pornography is usually, you know, you're closing the blinds, you're locking the door, you're putting yourself into a dark place, you're keeping it a secret. You know, you start thinking to yourself that like this thing, it almost becomes a ritual that you do when you're doing pornography. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, just ask yourself, like, you, you know, like, is it a problem? Like, do you are you able to stop yourself from looking at pornography? Like, is this a constant thing that you're telling yourself you're not going to do yet you keep doing? So my objective today is to kind of help people get a healthy view of sexuality, to see some of the dangers of pornography, but the biggest problem that it has, and this is the thing about pornography that's really scary is it on its surface, it seems like it's victimless. It seems like there's nobody that suffers from a pornography addiction. You're not quote unquote, hurting anybody else. Not like, you know, if you steal or lie or do some of these things where there's a direct person that's being affected by that, you feel like there's nobody being affected. And this is where pornography becomes a real issue. Um, confidence, the opposite of shame, essentially, is when we have overwhelming belief that we say we're going to do the thing that we do. We set our minds out to do something and we accomplish that thing. We say we're not going to do something. We don't do that thing. You say you're going to get up at a certain time. You get up at that time. As you do this, you build your confidence. And pornography is a destroyer of that because energetically it kills us. And we over and over again, we tell ourselves we're not going to do it. We tell ourselves it's not a problem, but you keep doing it. You keep falling short of it. Um, and it's this vicious cycle because then you feel worse about yourself. And because you feel bad, your coping mechanism is to go back to pornography to try to feel better. You get this temporary hit because physiologically there is a response to your body to pornography where it feels good in the short term. And like we know, everything that feels really good in the short term is probably not the best for you long term. And so you have this addiction that then happens because of this shame cycle. So in order to break that, we have to get a healthy view of sexuality overall. Um, and I think it's worth saying, you know, I mean, up till about 50 years ago, um, you just didn't have access to naked women everywhere, right? Maybe 100 years ago with, you know, print and some of these things, photography and some of these things that came out. But with the internet, especially, I mean, a guy today, a kid in high school today has more access to beautiful naked women than the wealthiest of whoremongers that ever lived up to a hundred years ago. Like when you think about that for a second, of course there's a negative effect this is having on society. You're not supposed to be able to have that much access to that much dopamine in that short amount of time. So this very idea that you can achieve that without actually doing anything, that you can have access to these beautiful women and that you can have a false connection to them without having accomplished anything or done anything worthwhile, um, is a very negative thing. And in general, you should probably look to avoid anything that spikes your dopamine without putting in the work first. Dopamine is put into place to reward us for doing something well or for doing something hard. So for example, if you went out and hunted or um, you know gathered berries and you took them and they were sweet, you got a dopamine hit, it was rewarding you for your hard work. If you accomplish something great, if you do you know put in a hard day's work, you feel good at the end of it because you knew you did that. But when you falsely give yourself a dopamine spike, which with cell phones and, um, you know, TikTok and uh, just social media and all these different things, you know, just the, the ability to get any amount of food that we want in a short, short, short amount of span of time without actually doing anything. Um, these are all false senses of dopamine spike and they're not good for us. So uh, I want to get into the actual part of uh, pornography of what it is and what it isn't. And, um, you know, for the women listening to this, um, I, I think one of the hardest things for women is that, and men, I think it's important to have this perspective of women because when you forget that, again, it feels victimless, but when you can remember that there's people on the other end of it, right? There's people that are suffering because of it. And I'll get into how this works energetically, but just on a practical view, I can't tell you how many friends I have, how many guys I coach whose wives find out that their husband's using porn, and they personally feel like they, they've been cheated on. They feel like they've been 
Uh, they can't trust the husband. They feel like um, he doesn't find them attractive. They feel that they, they have all these feelings and whether it's true or not, it's usually not. Um, for men, a lot of the crazy part is that it has very little to do with sex for the most part, but the woman feels that completely and it creates a huge disconnect. And what I mean by it having very little to do with sex is typically for a guy, um, pornography is a coping mechanism. And I spoke to this a little bit, but I want to explain a little bit more. Like alcohol does the same thing, right? We all have those things that we go to when we don't feel good. We're trying to quickly feel a little bit better. And um, one of the things that I want people to start to realize, especially when it comes around pornography and some of these issues, is the goal isn't to feel better. The goal is to feel more. And so when you get drawn to pornography, when you get drawn to look at these things, or if it's alcohol for you or whatever your addiction is, right? If it's social media, if it's whatever it might be. But in this particular case, especially with pornography, if you can just stop yourself long enough to ask a couple questions, then you can very quickly start to work through the coping mechanism of pornography. For example, when you feel like that call to go and look at porn, ask yourself what's really going on. Like, what am I feeling? What's happening inside of me? Why do I feel this? What is, am I stressed? Am I sad? Am I tired? Right? Am I lonely? These are usually the four reasons that somebody goes to porn. And instead of feeling into that feeling and allowing yourself to be a little sad, allowing yourself to be a little lonely, allowing yourself to be a little bit tired, we mask it. We cover it with pornography. We try to immediately feel better. So I want you to remember that line. The goal isn't to feel better, it's to feel more. And if you can start leaning into that a little bit, you can start asking yourself some pretty good questions when this comes up for you in your life. Um, and so I want to get into the energetics of pornography. This is, to me, the most important reason not to do it. Um, all the beauty of a relationship, all of the parts that make it amazing are that 10% at the end of it. So let me explain. Like 90% of people coast through a relationship. Um, very few people have that extra layer to the relationship where everything is on the table, where they're completely vulnerable, they're completely naked, they're completely able to just be. Like everything that's on their mind, their spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever can hear. They aren't holding back. They're not worried about how they're gonna be seen or judged. They truly have that connection on that level. And I've seen this so many times with different friends of mine. They'll say something like, you know, like, well, for example, like maybe a wife will end up leaving a guy uh, or cheat on him or something like that. And what she ends up saying is like, I just feel disconnected from you. I just feel like we're not, we don't have that same bond that we used to have. And what she's feeling is that energetic block that gets put up when you're cheating through pornography. It's a form of blocking the love that you're feeling. And so the woman feels it an intuitive woman, women at their, just in general, if they're tapped into their feminine, they're very intuitive to this stuff. And they know if a guy's not all the way in, they know if a guy has an energetic block. I'll give an example of this with a couple friends of mine a couple of years ago. Um, we all went to Vegas for a buddy's birthday. And one of my buddies was being really weird. He just was, uh, he's always wanted my attention and wanted to be close with me. And this particular day, he was pushing me away. And I was like, this son of a bitch is up to something. Like I could tell right away. Anyways, long story short, he's married and has a couple of kids. And that night he came home at like four in the morning. We were sharing a room and he walks in the hotel room and uh, he's like, oh, I should have just gone to bed, dude. I've been playing poker all night. And I was like, you dumbass. I said, I knew eight hours before you went that you were up to no good. I go, how was the strip club? And he's like, how did you know? I said, because I'm not an idiot, you know? And he kind of started expressing that like what had happened is his wife in his mind had been nagging him and bugging him. And he's like, she already thinks I'm cheating on her anyways. I might as well go. But what happened is she was picking up that energetic block that he had put up. He had made up his mind. This was something he was going to do. He had decided and she was picking up that because a good woman will do that. And she was calling him back to integrity. It looked like nagging. But what it really was, was her saying, you're better than this. Don't go do this. And to his credit... You know, um, a couple of weeks later, we were hanging out, me and a couple other friends. It's one of the impetuses for starting We Are The They, to be honest with you. And um, this particular friend, we were all hanging out and, and I said to him, I just, we're standing in the kitchen. I said, how much longer do you want to have this energetic block between you and your wife before you fix it? And he's like, well, dude, what if she takes the kids? What if she leaves me? And this dude had gone to the strip club and he knew what he did. 
she was not going to be okay with. She was going to hurt, feel hurt. She was going to feel betrayed. All of the above, right? Um, and I said to him, I said, dude, I said, what's it? What's the value of a relationship if you have this block in between you? Like, if you don't honestly have this honesty, if you don't have this beautiful vulnerability to your relationship you're missing the 10% that makes it all fun. Like the 90% is work. The 10% is the beauty of it. And if you don't have that, you really don't have anything. Most people just coast through life living in that 90%. I was like, dude, how much longer do you want to waste this time before you can truly have that as your person? And part of the beauty of that is once you feel that love and you know that like you've been exposed for all of the ugly parts of you and you feel loved in that sense, you know, you're loved. And if not, if you're holding back at all, that energy is going to block that from, from having that, that next level of, of just passionate love that you can trust in your relationship. So to his credit, he went and got it fixed up. And I'll never forget, his wife sent me a text that night and just said, thank you for loving my family. And that was literally one of the impetuses for starting We Are The They because I said, I want to help other men to be able to experience this. I want to help other men to have this. And I'll never forget our first weekend we got together, we had a guy... He grew up in, you know, the local religion here in Utah and um, great guy. And, uh, you know, one of the things we do is we jump off this rope swing the first weekend we're there. And the night before we do an exercise where you leave behind a limiting belief, a negative habit or a bad, or a bad habit or a negative relationship that you have. And you come up with a more empowering one. And, you know, I remember we were sitting on top of the cliff. He just came back up and he said, Jimmy, he said, I, I've never told anyone this. He said, for 35 years of my life, he said, I've, you know, I'm in my late thirties, I've had a porn addiction. Saw it when I was a little kid. I've looked at it pretty much every day since. And uh, I've never told my church leaders, never told my parents, never told my wife. And uh, he said, you're the first person I've ever told about this. And I said, well, I just wanna congratulate you. And first off, and uh, he got it. I explained the energetics part. And he said, wow, I want that. I want to be into, in integrity. I want to be able to trust the, the love I get. And he said to me, there's something I never forget. It was so beautiful. He said, Jimmy, he said, I've never been able to be celebrated a single day of my life because every good thing I did in the back of my mind, all I could think was if they knew who I really was, they wouldn't love me. I was like, damn, man, it's sad. So many beautiful moments of his life had been wasted or had been, um, you know, just ruined because in his mind, he wasn't lovable. He wasn't worthy of being loved. So he went and he told his wife the next day when he got home. And this particular member has been clean ever since. Um, but he said it changed everything. He said, I now know my wife loves me. When I sit by her, when I'm with her, she knows everything about me and she chooses me. And that's the gift that we give ourselves, guys. That's why pornography festers in the dark, you know. And by the way, I've never met a grown man that hasn't seen pornography. Not one. Uh, I remember back when I was in church, I was probably 30 at the time and we had this special speaker come and talk to us about pornography. And I remember he asked the class, probably a hundred guys sitting there. He said, raise your hand. If you've looked at pornography in the last six months, it was every single hand. I was like, wow, here we all think we're like this worst person. And we're going through this thing alone, all these different things. Right. And so first off, it's something that's very prevailing, but it's also something that can be overcome. And what happens is when we have shame and guilt around it, you're fighting a losing battle. You're not going to be able to overcome it. But when you get healthy sexually, all of a sudden, there's not this huge draw. There's not this compulsion um, to look at pornography. You have figured out other ways to cope with stress, being tired, being disappointed, being sad, all those different things in a healthy manner, and it can change the game forever. So if you're listening to this and you're thinking to yourself, okay, um, I don't want to have a pornography addiction. Again, go back to the question. Like if you're not sure if it's a problem, like are there people in your life that should know that you have this problem that you're not telling? And I would say spouse, girlfriend, like just a partner, right? Because it's that block that you have. And unfortunately, there's a lot of ways that people try to handle this, but a lot of them involve shame and guilt and things like that. Like you have to know, first of all, that you're not a bad person. Like we have a device in our freaking pockets with more access to naked women than the richest man in the history of mankind could have imagined a hundred years ago. That is a battle that if you don't get crystal clear about what you're trying to do, you're going to lose. Um, the appeal is very real and it's very accessible and it feels like there's no damage done. It feels like there's no problem in doing it. And so that's why this podcast is such an important one for me, because I want people to see 
a deeper reason than just, I shouldn't do it, or my spouse will be mad at me, or I'm going to make my wife feel bad, or my church says I shouldn't do it. No, like when you do these things, it starts to drop your confidence in who you are as a person. That creates an energy problem. It's like people say, like, how do I look in this outfit? Like when you're trying to wear clothes, like the whole point is to wear clothes that make you feel confident. If you feel good in it, who the hell cares what anyone else thinks? Like when it comes to how you're living, if you feel good about it, you don't care what other people think because that's true confidence. It comes from knowing that you're in alignment. So if you feel like this is something you want to stop and you keep falling short, well, you're probably fighting a battle that's very hard to win. So there's a couple things. Like number one is you got to get it out of the dark. Okay. So um, if you go back to my five pillars of success, I teach this all the time inside of We Are The They. Number one is you have to take a moral stance. You got to decide, like, I'm not going to look at pornography. Like, this is not going to be a part of my life. Number two is you have to change your behaviors. Um, you have to change the very behavior of looking at pornography, but also some of the behaviors that lead to you looking at pornography. Okay. The third one is you have to have accountability. You have to have a group that's going to support you and hold you accountable. The fourth one is you have to have a, a, a group to support you. You want to have people that you can go to, not like an AA meeting, but you just have to be able to have open dialogue and conversations with people that don't make you feel bad about yourself. I'll never forget the first time that I talked to Melissa was my life coach at the time. Um, you know, and I had looked at pornography on and off. I don't know, like once a month, once every three weeks, get triggered by something, look at pornography. Didn't feel like it was a problem. And I never had, like I would say, an addiction to pornography, but it was there. And it would, every time I did it, I'd beat the shit out of myself and feel bad about doing it and wanted to stop. And, but I had this unhealthy shame around it. And, you know, I've told this story many times, but I got my heart broken by a girl and went and made a bad decision. Um, went and out and hooked up with two random girls on a night out. And I thought that, you know, I was going to get absolutely shamed by my coach. I wasn't going to tell her. I'd had experiences before where I talked to a bishop, for example, and it just did not go well. You know, I remember one time, you know, that quote unquote confession or whatever, and he just looked at me, he said, God will not be mocked. And I was like, oh shit, uh, not exactly what I was going for here. And so I was expecting more like that kind of dialogue to take place. And, you know, and she showed me love and she showed me a healthier view on what had really happened and what was going on with me. And that changed the game for me forever. And I remember when I finally got a healthy um, view of sexuality and all of a sudden this pornography, which just wasn't like a thing. It wasn't something that I seeked after. It wasn't something that I needed in my life. It doesn't mean I didn't get triggered a few more times over the next couple of years and, and, and still have a moment where I would look at porn or whatever else, but it was never a ritual. It was never a thing in my life. It was never a thing I was battling or trying to beat. If it did happen, it was very quickly like, well, shit, all right, whatever, on with my day. And ultimately got to a point where pornography never uh, played a part anymore into my decisions and what I was doing. And so I know that you can overcome it through changing your views on sexuality. If you changing your views, getting a healthy view of your relationship with your wife or spouse or girlfriend, like being able to go to them. And instead of being shamed by them too, it's important that they know that they need to help and support. And that's a whole nother conversation for the wife or girlfriend, but it's also important to be able to understand them and be able to be in their shoes and what they're doing. A good woman doesn't want you to do that because she knows it's blocking you guys from having the ultimate connection the ultimate love. Tony Robbins talks about the six human connections or the six human needs. You know, we have variety, um, uh, uh, certainty, love or connection. He calls it significance, growth, and contribution. He says, if any four of those are in play, then you're going to have an addiction to whatever that thing is. If you look at pornography, you know, variety. Yeah. The ultimate variety certainty. Absolutely. You know what that experience is going to be significance. You have access to these beautiful women and you get to, you know, feel like that you're somehow connected to them. There's significance in that. And then connection. And what he says, he said, for most people, love is too dangerous or too scary. So they settle for connection. He said, unfortunately, you get connection from pornography. You can't get love, but it's such a, a fake version of what you're truly trying to get is one of my problems with, you know, AI or virtual things. It's one of the reasons why I want to always connect people in person. I hate Zoom meetings and all these kinds of things because anything like the devil is going to tell us that these fake things are real, that you can get the same significance from them. And pornography is like leading the way, right? Um, anything that's fake, it's false, um, it's counterfeit, um, is not from God. I can tell you that. 
And so the more you can lean into love, the more you can get real life love instead of settling for connection, the more fulfillment you're going to have in your life. But don't kid yourself. Like pornography is very addictive. It satisfies four of those human needs immediately. And it's right there in your phone. It's so easy to get. And so I think ultimately the whole reason I'm having this conversation, the whole reason I have this conversation with my men that I coach is because I want you to walk with a confidence. I want you to have a connection with the person that you're with that's real. You're not holding back. You're not saying to yourself, if she knew who I really was, she wouldn't love me. And this is the call that I give to all men is like, at what point do you want to get into integrity? At what point do you want to break down that wall, that energetic barrier that you've put up through pornography and let yourself be seen and let that love in so you can trust the love that you're getting? I think I've had probably 10 guys in my program come clean to their spouses or girlfriends about this. And all of them have been able to build a stronger connection. Every single one of them is glad that they did it. And so in your own life, it's just a good place to check yourself. Like, what are you doing? Are you hiding in the dark? Are you hiding this thing? Do you beat yourself up over it? Um, Do you want to overcome whatever your relationship is with pornography? Um, And I think it's important to understand what's going against you in this and how much more difficult it probably is to overcome than you probably think. You do need people to support and help you. Find some friends that'll be there that can listen to you, that can love you no matter what, so that you're not thinking to yourself, I'm a bad person. You understand that you just did a thing you shouldn't have done. It's a very different thing. Much love, my friends. Uh, This is something that if you want more information on, if you're interested in talking deeper on this subject, um, I recommend you look at our coaching program, We Are The They. It's one of the few things that we uh, cover and talk about and are very open about. And there's very few places these days you can do that without shame and guilt. And so um, check us out, wapmovement.com. And we will see you on the next episode of Real Men, Real Conversations. (music) 